everyone. Welcome to Slice of Life. My name is Dabney. I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System. And today I am going to be talking to you all about one of my favorite things, which is fan fiction. Um, if you have never read fan fiction and don't know what it is, um, basically it is works created by fans about their favorite um, shows or books or movies or characters. So if you ever um, watched a show and written a story about your favorite character on it, that is fan fiction. So the first time I encountered fan fiction, I was, I think about in middle school, it was at the height of my Lord of the Rings obsession, and I found this like forum website where people posted their Lord of the Rings fan fiction. Um, I didn't know that's what it was at the time, but I was absolutely there for it, and I read like pretty much all the stories on there. And then I didn't really get into fan fiction again until um, 2015 when I set up a Tumblr blog and um, gradually started branching into fandom and got particularly invested in a few fandoms and started writing fic for them. So I'll talk about those um, towards the end of this discussion. Um, but yeah, fan fiction has been around for a while. Um, it got its start as uh, print zines before, you know, the advent of the internet. So people still make print zines um, for their fandoms. These are a couple that I have. But then um, gradually this content moved online to spaces like LiveJournal and FanFiction.net. Um, but yeah, before um, being a fanfiction reader or writer was kind of considered taboo, like you didn't really tell people about it. Um, and even some writers sued fanfiction creators um, for writing fanfiction, which is just wild, but thankfully nowadays it is way more accepted and some of my favorite young adult authors talk about how they got started writing fanfiction and they still write fanfiction now, which is really cool. Um, so when I write fanfiction and I share it online, there's two places that I do that. One is my Tumblr blog. So what I like about that is you can um, post longer works on there. So um, some people post to Twitter, but on there there's definitely like a word count limit. So people end up posting these long threads of their um, fic that they're writing. But yeah, I like Tumblr because I can write long works. Um, I like the tagging options and um, I like the interactions with other fans on there. Um, you know, when I post something, it's always great to see the likes and the reblogs come in. And when people comment on the fic, um, it really does make my day. The other place, and the most well-known place probably, is AO3, which is Archive of Our Own. And this is a huge repository of um, fan fiction. To quote from their website, they are a fan-run uh, fan created non profit, non commercial archive for transformative works um, like fan fiction, fan art, fan videos, and podfic. And they have over 30,000 fandoms on there. They have over 2 million users and over 6 million works. So I guarantee if you have a favorite um, TV show or book, that you could go on there and find fan fiction about it. Um, it's it's huge, and what makes it really special is the tagging system on there. Um, so you can go through and search for fix, and you can filter, you know, your search results um, by, you know, is this a completed work? Is it still in progress? You can select what language you want. You can find out, um, you know, how many words there are. If it's single chapter, you can look at the content warnings and the ratings and all these things that you can like filter out your results to find exactly what you want and um, sometimes I'll be hanging out with a friend and we'll be watching a show and I'll say you know I wonder if there's any fan fiction about these characters but 
in a modern setting and they work at a coffee shop um, and she'll get on archive of our own and she'll put all that stuff into the search and then she'll be like yeah these are your results this is what you could go read so that is really excellent um, but one thing to be aware of if you're getting into fan fiction is it's a very diverse um, place so you've got creators of all ages and all backgrounds making content and um, you know you have readers of all ages on there reading that content so for the writers you know they really need to um, be responsible when they're posting their work about correctly rating it um, tagging content warnings and um, you know adding tags about what's there and that's, you know, then the reader, it's their responsibility before they read a fic to look over those tags and see if this is something that they want to engage with. Um, and they can make healthy choices for themselves, you know, if they're like, oh, this topic triggers me or I don't like this pairing, you know, they can just say, whatever, I'll read something else. AO3 does have um, a little warning that comes up. If you're going to read something that's been rated mature or explicit, you have to click either proceed or go back and it'll warn you like this may have adult content. So, you know, that's an extra step to kind of protect yourself. But there are like tons and tons of fix out there that are for like general audiences or teen audiences. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about is some fandom terms that come up in fan fiction a lot. So the first off we have canon and these are um, the actual works. So you know the Raven Boys and Captain America those are canon works and the things that happen in those and the characters and all that that's canon. Um, if you're writing a fan fiction and it's canon compliant that means that it's set within the canon story and the writer is trying to accurately follow the timeline of the story and the representation of the characters. Um, head canons, those are traits and actions and backstories that a fanfic creator imagines for canon characters. So you could say, I head canon that Peter Parker is trans. Um, fanon, these are theories and head canons created by fans that become so popular that they're considered like secondary canon. Um, post canon and pre canon, these are things that happen either after or before um, the canon events. OOC or out of character, this is um, pretty subjective and it's usually a criticism of a fandom creator's representation of a character. Um, so, for example, if you're reading a Thick and Steve Rogers is swearing all the time, you'd say, hmm, that seems really out of character for Steve. Um, original character, this is a character that a writer has created that doesn't exist in canon, but they've put it into their story. Shipping, which everyone loves, this is when you pair up um, two or more characters. So some people are like, I ship Steve and Bucky. Um, and then ship names, this is when you mash together character names who are in a ship. So Steve and Bucky, their ship name is Stucky. Um, some people who like Star Wars and ship Finn Poe. They also are known as Storm Pilot. So ship names don't actually have to be like the character names. It can be other things. OTP, this is one true pairing. Um, you know, it could be... Uh, canon compliant or not. So if you're a Harry Potter fan, you could say like, is your OTP Henny or Dreary? OT3, this is a ship that has um, three or three partners. Um, so naturally from there you get OT4, OT5, and so on. Uh, no TP, this is a ship that you don't like for whatever reason. And then a rare pair is a ship between two unlikely characters, so maybe even ones that don't even meet in canon, but you want them to be together. AU is alternate universe. 
So um, you could say, what if Harry and Draco worked at a coffee shop? And then you would have a coffee shop AU. Fix it fix. This is when the writer rewrites canon in a way that makes them happy. Like they wanted a better ending for this show. So they wrote a fix it fix and fix the problems. Crossovers are when you combine two different um, fandoms. So for example, what if the um, supernatural characters had gone to Hogwarts and met the Harry Potter characters. RPF, this is real people fic, and this is fan fiction about people who actually exist, like the One Direction guys or people from BTS. And then there's lots and lots and lots of other tags that people put on their fix to let you know what type of content is in there. So for example, you've got fluff and slow burn and hurt comfort, mutual pining, enemies to lovers, fake dating, roommates, um, college AU, and so on. The list is endless. But yeah, um, I started writing fan fiction and got into it um, in about 2016, and this was after I had read um, a young adult series called All for the Game by Nora Sakavic. It is a self-published work, and I only found out about it through Tumblr. But um, I had really got invested in all of the characters. Um, this series, the audiobooks are on Hoopla. We have physical volumes in the library. Um, it's really intense, so I only recommend it for, like, older teens. But um, the main character, Neil Jostin, he is recruited to play XE, which is a fictional sport um, for a college in South Carolina. And he ends up going there and joining this um, team of, like, highly dysfunctional players. And, um, you know, all, lots and lots of really crazy things happen in this series, but um, the characters just like really like latched onto my heart and I just wanted to keep writing a, like seeing stories about them after the books were over and then I wanted to write my own stories about them. Um, so generally when I'm writing fan fiction, the inspiration comes from um, an idea like what if these characters met under other circumstances, um, what are they doing after the canon story is over? Um, you know, even something silly like what does it look like for them to have Christmas together? And from there I just like to um, explore that and, you know, look into moments that canon doesn't show us in their lives. Um, I really love writing alternate universes and um, when it comes to writing ships, I typically write like what the canon ships are, but then I also like to write um, other ships. So I'm what they call a multi-shipper, and I do really enjoy rare pairs. Um, but yeah, all this is a fun way, like I said, to engage with these stories. Um, it's a good creative outlet. It helps, like you know, me improve my writing. It's a good way to make um, fandom friends and. Um, also, it's a good way to process things. It's kind of like free therapy. You can just sort of project your issues on the characters and like work through that. Um, but yeah, fan fiction, it's challenging, it's rewarding. At this point, I've written and posted like over, well, close to 700,000 words of content in four years so I'm really into it and my three big fandoms are The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater, All for the Game by Nora Sakavic, and Venom the 2018 movie starring Tom Hardy. Don't judge me I really love it. <laughs> but yeah um, if you are looking for a new hobby I encourage you to check out fan fiction. Um, like I said there's tons of stories and anything you like could be represented there. So, for example, I just did a search for the Marvel Cinematic Universe English language fix on AO3, and I got over 300,000 results. So you can read forever. It is free. Um, it's great. It's so much fun. And, you know, I've read some truly beautiful works that are 
like every bit as worthy and wonderful as canon. Um, I've laughed, I've cried, I've flailed, I've stayed up way too late reading. So yes, highly recommend that you check out some fan fiction. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, we will not have a live must read Monday um, because it's Memorial Day. However, Abby is working on a book talk about um, mental health in young adult novels. And so she is going to be posting that to IGTV. It'll be available Monday after 3.30 for y'all to watch. But yeah, thank you for tuning in and I'll see y'all all later. Bye.